Good afternoon. Coming up at Fresno State Focus, Fresno State students help out at Kids Day. And later, Fresno State students talk hip hop with Brother Jay and Chuck D. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Diana Galera. And I'm Nate DeLeon. We have a great show for you today. Let's get started. The Environmental Protection Agency passed new engine emission standards and its clear air non-road diesel rules. In order to comply with the new standards, innovative equipment will have to be purchased. Agricultural professor Ken Herpal says newer tractors will meet the necessary requirements of their four engines. This new engine produces cleaner and less harmful exhaust. Fresno State hopes to receive a grant from the San Joaquin Valley Air Board to help replace their current tractors. The new equipment will help reduce exhaust emissions up to 90% by the year 2015. Every February, our nation celebrates Black History Month, but students at Fresno State are working to promote black culture in more than just one month. The university's chapter of the NAACP is pushing for a wider education on minority culture, specifically black culture. In honor of that goal, the club is hosting an event to let it be known that their pride should be shown all year round. The event called Black is Beautiful 365 will be held on April 4th in the Satellite Student Union and is free for all to attend. The, the Fresno State Farmer's Market is moving to a new location. Thomas Donatelli tells us about the location. Fresno State Farm Market started as an outdoor stand. Then in 1955, they moved indoors. This month, the market will be moving into a 4,000 square foot building. As the campus grows, so does the farm market. The farm market includes tasting areas for award-winning Fresno State wines, plus the selection of Fresno State's ice cream, milk, cheese, seasonal fruits, and vegetables, top quality meat, raisins, nuts, plants, and much more. Products at the market are sold seasonally. Student manager Drew Salies tells us about customer favorites. I was the best and busiest season for us would be our summer season when we have our sweet corn available. Uh, all the customers around the valley come for just our sweet corn, but also the different Ferrer products. Uh, I believe our ice cream products will be well uh, to coexist with the, our corn products, but definitely our, our uh, summer season will be the busiest. Our opening day right now is March 10th at 10 a.m. Come out and join us. So we'll be giving out some free samples and just everyone will have a good time. Thomas Donatelli, Fresno State Focus. It's that time of year once again for the 26th annual Kids Fundraiser. Many Fresno State students did their part to help make this year's event one for the books. Oh yeah, Kids Day, yeah! Newspaper, yeah! With a Kids Day newspaper in hand, thousands of volunteers hit the streets Tuesday morning to raise funds for Children's Hospital Central California. Many Fresno State clubs and organizations show support for this good cause, contributing more than $36,000 in donations last year. When we talk to our clubs and organizations, this is, has become really a tradition for many of the groups to participate, and, and most of them just comment, you know, we want to help out the little kids. With more than 1,200 students from different organizations competing to raise the most money, the title is up for grabs. Some students are willing to do whatever it takes to get that perfect spot, even if it means spending the night. We've been out here since 10 p.m., um, just camping out, uh, holding our spot. We brought a bunch of snacks and food and sleeping bags and a cot, um, and we've just been taking shifts the whole night just to save it. With so many volunteers trying to sell papers, Alex Sung says students need to Thank find a so way much. to stand out. I just get excited and then, I mean, I don't want people to buy newspapers, so I start <laughs> yelling at them, I guess. Student Paulina Flores has volunteered at the center for the past three years and helps with the distribution of 25,000 newspapers. It does make a difference to just really get involved in your community and, you know, even if one student thinks they're uh, input and just their activities don't make a difference but in reality you know it's the little things that matter in life so you know that one person does create big change. Organizers say this year's fundraiser broke a record total raising more than four hundred and eighty thousand dollars with a few sites still to count. Diana Aguilera, Fresno State Focus. 
As you just saw, Kids Day is a great way to give back to the community. Joining us now is Mikey Sanchez, who participated in this year's event. Thanks for coming, Mikey. Oh, not a problem. So tell me a little bit, why did you decide to volunteer for this event? Um, I love volunteering for Kids Day. It's, um, it's the third Kids Day that I've participated in, and part of the reason is just it's a great way for the entire community to give back to Children's Hospital Central California. They're a nonprofit, so all the funds really help them. And then in addition, one of my nieces actually went to Children's Hospital when she was younger. And the nurses and the doctors and the staff did an amazing job and made her feel really comfortable. So I just feel it's the, the least that I can do. Mm -hmm. And did you do it by yourself or were you part of like a fraternity raising the funds? Um, yes, I am part of a fraternity. I'm a brother of Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity here at Fresno State. And um, we uh, seek out different locations and try to compete amongst one another to see who can raise the most money. And um, it's a really fun event, hanging out with your brothers and selling newspapers. Do you think um, it made the experience a little bit more memorable by being with your brothers? Of oh the yeah, it, de it definitely helps a lot and it helps pass the time. You're just out there having fun, trying to see who could, um, who could do the best in terms of selling newspapers. We're out there having a good time. So it definitely makes it a lot more memorable. And do you encourage Fresno State students to get out there and participate in community service? Oh yeah, of course. I would highly encourage anybody watching to get out there, get involved give back to the community because it's so easy as students to get caught up in our lives, um, midterms, finals, um, just stress that comes with being a student, but there's people out there who would gladly trade places with us that are less fortunate. So I feel that it's our job as students to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And when did you begin with your fraternity? Um, I began in fall 2011 is when I crossed. And since then I've been participating in every single kids day that's come around. And what other type of activities um, relating to community services do you and your fraternities do? Um, we've done several. We're heavily involved in Fresno revitalization in the El Dorado Park area. And one of my favorite events that we've done is we partnered with Old Navy uh, prior to the school starting for um, high school and elementaries. And we donated shoes, backpacks, school materials, papers to uh, about 30 needy families in the area. And I feel like it really made their day. Well, thank you so much for coming, oh, Mikey. No problem. Appreciate it. Well, to find out more um, ways to get involved in the community, you can visit the Jan and Bud Richter Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning on campus. This year, flyers have been posted around the campus for the lost and found. Reporter Ashley Monk has a story. While students hustle to get to their classes on time, they may leave their belongings behind. So where do these lost treasures go? They make their way to Fresno State's Lost and Found. Fresno State's Director of Procurement, Brian Cottom, says there are different types of Lost and Found. One is items valued uh, $300 and above. Um, we have a property clerk out there that will determine the value of it, so we keep those items. Um, also, my, uh, items that may be money, cashier's checks that are turned in, and then also personal items. The question remains, do you know where Lost and Found is? Fresno State student John Burns has a good excuse. Oh, I'm new here. I have no idea. Business major Jessica Wood gave a nice guess. I would maybe probably go over to the University Center, which is right over here. Finding the lost and found located at University Warehouse isn't an easy task. The building is located on Barstow and Woodrow. It was never even promoted. You know, people didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. And what we had found is some of the just like offices within buildings were kind of doing their own lost and found, which does not help a student. Cottom hopes that the flyers posted around campus will help students who have lost their property. The building behind me has no signs to indicate that it's the university warehouse, just flyers to direct you to the right location. Cottom says that signs for the building are in the works to make the students' lives easier. Ashley Monk, Fresno State Focus. For the first time since 1986, Fresno State softball has a new head coach. And coming up in sports, we get to know the first year coach, Trish Ford, and the Bulldogs softball team.
I am Fresno State, and I'm going to show you why. Here's the beautiful and newly constructed Henry Madden Library, which has a massive collection. The Save Mart Center, which is our sports venue and one of the best attended in the entire country. We're absolute pioneers in the agricultural sciences, having led to the production of the first university winery and drawing in a diversity of students to achieve academic success over the past 100 years. And you know, I wish I had time to tell you about everything else, but in reality, I think you're just going to have to come see for yourself. This marks the Bulldogs' first season in the Mountain West Conference, but the road to get there was not easily traveled. Although the season has started slow, Coach Basil knows that playing tough competition early will lead up to better play when it comes to conference games. Well, I think that's it. I think we've got to get our bullpen turned around, find some roles for those guys that they can sit into and get the middle of our order with those veteran guys, the few that we have. If we get them going, that'll change everything. The team plans on staying positive and working hard. Batesel has potential of a very talented team and is going to lead the way he knows how to. Well, you, you know, nobody wants to get off to a poor start, and everybody wants to get this going in the right direction, and that means somebody's got to step up. Going into their series with Cal Berkeley, the dogs are 3-8. and eight. Starting pitcher Will Monroe says our young team is up for a challenge and believes early setbacks won't stop the team's drive. We're gonna we're gonna pull through. It's just we're just grinding right now, trying to trying to get things to go our way a little bit. It's gotten off to fast starts, and uh, it's we we want, we're trying to contain that the whole way through. We just got to stick with our system. Coach Base is a great system here. Coach Rousey with the pitchers. Uh, we just gotta we just gotta stick with our system. It worked all fall. Uh, we had a lot of success, even though we we're just playing ourselves. We had a lot of success against each other and for each other. The team knows what they need to fix before conference play. With the help of Batesel and the rest of the coaching staff, fans should be ready for good things to come. With the new season of Fresno State softball comes a new head coach. Jeff per Perlmutter has a story at Bulldog Diamond. Four, six, zero, three, and go dogs. The dogs won the St. Mary's game. Let's go dogs. The Bulldogs wrapped up their long weekend with an 8-0 Mercy win over the St. Mary's Gales on Sunday. With new head coach Trisha Ford at the helm, freshman pitcher Hannah Harris says Ford's energy is the reason for the team's chemistry. She's just brought so much passion for the game and energy, and it's really like rubbed off on all of us. Everybody is like always um, ready to come out here and practice and play, and we just really enjoy playing for her. In her inaugural season, Ford has led the Bulldogs to a 15 and 11 overall record, and says her young team's hard work and effort is starting to pay off. Yeah, I think that, you know, when I first took over, we're really young as a group, so they, you know, kind of were deer in headlights, you know, trying to figure out what my expectations were going to be, what our staff's expectations were going to be, and how we're going to execute it. So they've really done a good job of sticking to that process, and they're starting to see some of those benefits. With players like sophomore Michelle Solomon, who hit a monster home run on Sunday, Ford feels the team has progressed and the future is bright. Yeah, I'm just proud of their progression. I mean, we're a very, very young team, and so for them to be able to keep getting better game by game, and, you know, there's been some games that we've thrown away, and, you know, I, I just keep telling them, as long as we learn from this, you know, it's all going to work out at the end. Overall, this weekend served as a test run, and head coach Trisha Ford led the Bulldogs to a 2-1 and one record in her first Fresno State Classic. Jeff Perlmutter, Fresno State Focus. The Student Recreation Center offers a variety of programs around the clock to help students stay fit and stress-free. The Rec Center offers a variety of fitness programs and a pool gym for students. The center has now been open since 2006. Derek Walters, the director, says it is one of the things students really use. Oh, I think it's probably been one of the best things that Fresno State's done in the past probably 10 or 15 years. Really? You know, it's, it's seven years old. You know, we, we've, you know, we've gone well over one and a half million people. Walter says they average 11 to 1,200 students a day. Student Jessica Tuttle says she tries to come five to six times a week to get a good workout. So it really is a huge stress reliever. Plus, if you want to stay fit, Fresno State gives you a free place to do it. No membership. So, I mean, that's always good, too. Tuttle says she enjoys coming to the center with her friends. Employee and student Angelina Arietta says she gets a lot of regulars in her body flow class. Spring break kind of draws a crowd in. Everybody wants to get in shape, mm -hmm. but um, it's kind of hard during midterms. People just they spend more time studying than working out, I think. But 
Um, we have a pretty good traffic flow, I'd say, this semester compared to last semester. Whether it's a Zumba or cycling class or an intense workout, more and more students are visiting the rec center. Crystal Hernandez, Fresno State Focus. In 2012, the Fresno State football team finished in fir its first season in the Mountain West Conference as co-champions. Here today, I have been with se senior middle linebacker from the Fresno State football team, Greg Spivak. Thanks for joining me today. What's going on, man? Pretty good. Um, you walked onto the football team. How difficult was that? Uh, it definitely wasn't an easy process. You know, uh, I had a former alumni who played here years, years ago recommend me on the team, but uh, you know, it was, it was tough coming out during summertime and not knowing anybody. But. Uh, when you were younger, did you see yourself ever playing Division One football? Um, yes and no. I, you know, I was real big into other sports, but uh, also football is always my biggest sport. So uh, it was always one of my goals to play it. Uh, now that you're an FS, FSU Bulldog, would you say the experience has been humbling? Um, yeah, definitely. At first, you know, it was kind of a, kind of a shock to be a Bulldog. Now it's uh, definitely a kind of reality. Uh, I know that you've been through a, uh, you've had a lot of injuries throughout your career. Uh, was it the toughest one uh, before bouncing back before walking on, or was it all of them have been equally difficult to, to come back from? Um, I'd say uh, coming back from my ACLs was the hardest. You know, as the oldest, and uh, it, was, it was my most recent injury, and it's pretty, it's pretty difficult to come back from that one. Uh, you this past season, you got to go to Hawaii with the Fresno State football team. Uh, how was going to Hawaii, and despite the loss, how was the just the in general the experience? Um, we had a lot of fun. We did a lot of team functions, a lot of team activities. Uh, you know, it was a blast. I've never been to. Uh, uh, Honolulu before, I had no idea it was that big of a city. If you uh, could ch change anything that happened, that injury-wise, or going to junior college before you transferred to Fresno State, would you change anything, or right now you're happy with what happened? Um, I'd probably go back in high school and uh, you know, get better grades, and so I could go straight to a four-year instead of going to a junior college first. All right, thank you very much, Greg, for your time, and good luck to the rest of the Bulldog team for the rest of the season. All right, man. That's it for sports. <laughs> back to you, Nate and Diana. Uh, thank you, Cody. And come, when we come back, the Fresno State students get a lesson from hip hop from Chuck D and Brother J. Plus, we'll meet some students who definitely don't have two left feet. A look into the salsa club is next. You can't ignore the natural disasters that have hit America over the past month. There's been flooding in many states, and right now in Texas and California, wildfires have already destroyed over a thousand homes but there's something you can do to help. Please call 1-800-RED-CROSS and make a donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief. Call right now. I'll wait. Did you forget the number? Here. Go on, scoot. Thank you so much. Grab his keys. The Africana Studies program put on another presentation in honor of African People's History Month. Jennifer Campos has more on the story. March 5th, in the Industrial Tech Building, students gathered in room 101 to watch the presentation by Brother Jay and Chuck D. The annual Hip Hop Research and Interview Project presents Repairing the Game. Dr. Johnson welcomes Brother J to the stage. Brother J not only spoke to the audience about the change of hip hop, but also used visuals to get his point across. Audience member Brian Dunn enjoyed what the speakers had to say. Just how Chuck D covered. Uh, a lot of issues that, that probably won't be talked about in, in a normal form. Brother Jay wants to set a solid and positive foundation for the youth in the hip-hop industry. Human rights and, you know, and things of that nature, but 
we got to get, you know, we got to get a better platform on what man and woman are first. We don't even give youth a chance to learn what it is fully to absorb the jewels. With the help of Dr. Johnson, students were able to learn about the evolving hip hop history with Chuck D and Brother J. Student Renee McPherson says what's really important. The importance of what's on the inside opposed to what you're marketing on the outside. So I thought that was really important um, with this. With this like Brother J says what he came to do. Yes, um, I was here to touch the next generation, um, the next generation of teachers, uh, the next generation of builders who can make the change that we were speaking about in repairing the game. Ending in a standing ovation, Brother Jay knows he touched many lives. Jennifer Campos, Fresno State Focus. The Fresno State Salsa Club is giving students a chance to pick up some new dance lessons. They get together twice a month to teach students how to dance some salsa. On the second and fourth Friday of the month, students gather at Fresno State to learn how to dance salsa. The Fresno State Salsa Club gives lessons for free. Travis Beasley is a student at Fresno State. He is also in charge of promotions and advertising for the club. Yeah, we always do at least two lessons. We do a, we always do a beginning lesson, and then we do um, sometimes we do an intermediate slash advanced lesson, or we'll do a bachata lesson or a cha cha lesson. But we always have a beginning salsa, and it's always from seven to eight's our lesson for an hour, and then we do social open dancing from eight till ten thirty. One, two, three, overshoot your step behind and in front. Five. The club gives you a chance to meet new people and grow strong bonds. And Nelson Gonzalez is one of many students who comes for the lessons. But they're very social. Like they're very nice. They're like a little, like small little family. Here on Friday nights at the Peters Building, it's a good place to come and learn some salsa lessons. We have the beginning class here. Next door, they have the intermediate class, and they also have the advanced class. It's a good way to learn some steps they can show off when you go out with your friends. Fernando Flores is a singer and is one of the salsa instructors. He recommends students come out on March 22nd to take advantage of the lessons. It's a really fun social activity and everyone's very friendly. You don't really have to worry about anybody you know, making fun of you or being mean. Everyone's here to have a good time. Nate DeLeon, Fresno State Focus. That was a lot of fun. Definitely worth checking out. Today on the show, we have the treasure DJ dance instructor for the club, Carlos Camarena. Well, you're a busy man. Uh, can you do me a favor? Um, tell me a little bit about the show, about what you guys do out there at the Salsa Club. Well, like I said, we are a Salsa Club. It's a great time. Like I said, we meet twice a week. Uh, we're basically a club of students. You know, we put this, on, put this event on twice a week for students to come out and learn um, in a way that, that's, you know, it's not a pressure of a club. You know, there's a lot of local places to go out and start dancing. There's a lot of places that you don't necessarily usually have to pay for lessons, and it's a way for students to come and enjoy um, a, a place amongst students uh, where we get the chance to work with them and show them, learn something new, meet some new people. Now, what are some of the dances you guys teach there? Um, obviously, we primarily focus on salsa. Um, in other places, we do teach um, bachata, another dance style. Uh, we teach merengue, and we've also taught cumbia in the past as well. Now, if you're a beginner, is that a comfortable environment where you're going to be able to learn steps? How easy is it to learn these steps? Yeah, instead of just a, a traditionally, you know, real formal uh, classroom environment, you know, we're all students. We're all learning something together. You get to meet a lot of great people. Um, and the beauty of it is that we do get to work with you on a personal level. It's not exactly a huge dance classroom. You're not amongst other people that you necessarily have to be embarrassed by um, or embarrassed to, you know, maybe mess up or maybe to learn something new. It's something that, that a lot of new people go in, and it's, it's a platform for students to, to learn something different. And uh, where is it held? Um, downstairs in the Peters Building, actually, rooms 11, 12, and 13. We usually hold our workshops starting at 7 o'clock um, in the Peters Building. It's at twice a week. Our next one will actually be this Friday. Um, again, lessons start at 7 o'clock, and they're just going to go till 8, social from 8 to 10.30. Do you guys have a good gathering? Uh, you know, we've been getting pretty consistently about 20, 20 30 somewhat students. Obviously, this last week, the weather didn't exactly work in our favor. Um, but, you know, we, it's, it's a lot of good times. We have a chance to, like I said, we get together and get the students to learn and have a social there. And, and when you pick up these moves, where's a good place in town you would recommend for students to go and practice their moves? Exactly. And the beauty of the timing is that we, we end at 1030. So as soon as you're done, if you're feeling comfortable, you can obviously go straight out and go start dancing. A couple of places you can probably check out um, are Starline Grill. Uh, they do have salsa nights there. Uh, Mescal does have uh, nights to go dancing as well as Fajira Fiesta. 
Now, how did you get involved with the club? Um, actually, in high school, I started dancing uh, salsa, and then when I came from uh, my high school here to Fresno State, I knew about the club. I'd seen them perform before. I knew I wanted to get involved. Uh, so I started going to their Friday nights and actually ended up performing with um, the, the team uh, for about a semester, and I've stayed with the club since then, met some great people, some great friends, um, learned a lot of new moves. Now, you said you have a team. Does a team do any kind of competitions? Do you guys travel at all? Uh, they do a lot of performances and not as much competitive work, but for example, this coming um, in May, on May 3rd actually, we're going to be having, hosting our semester um, salsa night. It's going to be held at Studio 65 um, in Fresno. Um, the team will be performing there. We have another local salsa team that's coming to perform. Um, and they do also do community events as well where the team will get invited to go out and perform. Well, thank you very much, Carlos, for your time. Absolutely. And I appreciate you being here, okay? Thank you so much. Alrighty, thanks. Well, there you have it. Put on your dancing shoes and go see Carlos on Friday, March 22nd at the Peters Building. Classes start at 7 p.m. and it's free. The Office of Study Abroad and International Exchanges holds weekly drop-in information sessions for students. We decided to check out one of these info sessions to see why studying abroad can be an important part of the college experience for many students. Zach Edward has a story. Fresno State is a beautiful campus. But if students want their college experience to be larger than just the Central Valley, there is an answer. The Study Abroad Program. For students looking to experience the globe through a study abroad, the experience starts here in room 119 of the Family and Food Sciences Building. Students can choose from a wide range of possible destinations, from South Korea to England to Spain. Dr. Sophia Lam is the coordinator of global education and a product of the study abroad program herself. She says the biggest thing stopping many students from traveling is a lack of funds. The biggest obstacles um, is financial. Um, what we have been trying to do is to help students to um, um, package their financial aid coverage with their study abroad and also to um, choose programs that is within their financial means and also to explore um, scholarships that are available to them. For students that are able to go, the experience is invaluable. Some students believe in the program so much that they come back to the office to help educate others on the program. The cultural experience, the experience of traveling in a country that you may not understand, the language may be different, um, the experience of having to navigate around that country that you know nothing about um, boils down to the experience. Ultimately, with financial aid readily available in so many countries to choose from, there's only one question for students. Where do you want to go? Zach Edwards, Fresno State Focus. Well, um, I know what I'm going to be doing this summer. I'm going to be traveling, packing my bags, and I'm going to be going to Puerto Rico. How about you, Dana? What do you have planned for the summer? Well, I was actually thinking of going back home to Chile, but I don't know if I can afford it yet. I'm still wondering. What about you? Staying local, that's for sure. You don't want to go with me to Puerto Rico, Cody? It's too far, man. Well, coming up next week on Fresno State Focus, a Fresno State professor joins the Fresno City College tennis team. And 3D technology makes its way to Fresno State campus. Those stories and more when we come back in next week's edition of Fresno State Focus. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Have a great day.